<clears throat> well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you out this morning. This morning, we're, again, we're in the 15th chapter of, of Romans. First of all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, again, we give you thanks, God, for all things. We thank you, God, for this and another opportunity you've allowed us to come to worship you and your word. We're asking God this morning again that the Holy Ghost come and be our teacher. We ask God that you'll open our hearts and our minds to receive this word one more time, God, and it'll go down into the heart, and Father, it will honor you in whatever way you want it to, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're down, uh, we was on verse 22 uh, last week. <clears throat> and Paul said, For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. <clears throat> now as we said last week, any time that you make up your mind you're going to do something for God, you're going to have a hindrance. You've got, you've got to have a made up mind. Uh, you know, as I said last week, I, I'd like to know over the years the numbers of people that have told me that they enjoyed the teaching and would be back or, or I'm coming to the class or whatever and I never see them. Did you know that some of the least attended services in any church, in, mo in most churches, I, I won't say all, but some churches have good teaching classes, but a teaching class is one of your lower attended services, you know, in, mo in, most, in most situations. But did you know this? The last thing that the devil wants you to know is the Word of God. Because when Jesus was tempted of the devil, what was, what was his armor? It is written. And we've got to use the same armor today. You know, because God will honor his word. As I've said so many times, he will not honor my opinion. And so that's the reason why it is necessary for you to be in a teaching class or, or hear a teaching class to learn the word of God. But I want to say this. One of the best ways that you'll learn the word of God is to read it for yourself and ask the Holy Ghost to teach you. But once he gets it down in there, you, nobody's going to get it out. Because you know that is the word of God. Okay. You will, you will. Yeah, that's that is something else. The devil will always distract you some way to keep you from from reading and learning the Word of God. But but this is what we've got. It it's our spiritual food. You sit down to a, a good meal. I don't care what happens. You're not going to let somebody distract you from eating that meal. So why do we let that the devil distract us from reading the Word of God? You know, we need to rebuke that and go uh, and move on. Yeah. Well, why is America in the shape that it's in today? We have got a lot of weak Christians. You know, because <clears throat> uh, pastor was just telling me uh, in, in this town, a, a certain pastor, I don't know who, he, he didn't call no names or nothing, but he's going to vote for the, the bunch that wants abortion same-sex marriage, and everything like that. Folks, no wonder you're in the shape you're in when you have spiritual leaders that ain't got no more sense than that. I mean, I mean that's hard to say, but that, 
you, you should know you should not be voting for people that are against the word of God. You know. What, ha what happened to Israel? When Israel strayed away from, from, from the word of God, they went into captivity. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he'll do it to this country if we don't straighten it up. It's, it's left up to us. I've heard different, different prophets that they say, you know, what happens in the election will be determined upon the prayers of the church. You know, I, you can't you can't trust these news media, you know, because they're going to tell you what they want you to hear. Yeah, but God is the one. In, we we just read it here in Romans right recently. God is the one that that puts the people in power. God God can do. He 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 will put the people in power for America. But here's the thing about it, just like it was with Israel, it was not God's will that Israel have a king, but the people wanted it and God allowed them to have it, and so that's what took them down. Yes, you know. See, God is not dictatorial. He does, he does not make you do something. We have to do it of our own free will, you know. You know, not like the old comedian used to say, well, the devil made me do it, you know. Well, yeah, he'll influence you, but you've got to have the will to do it. You know, it's got to be in you somewhere. So, <clears throat> verse 23 said, but now having no more place in these parts, having a great desire, desire these many years to come unto you, Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on to you on, on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. Now that word thitherward means uh, uh, there. What a, uh, amplified Bible. Uh, explains that verse very well, verses uh, uh, 23 and 4. <clears throat> he said, But now since I have no further opportunity to work in these regions, and since I have long or enough years to come to you, I hope to see you in, in passing through Rome as I go on my intended trip to Spain and to be aided on my journey there, by you after I have enjoyed your company for a little while. See, there's something that we need to understand. As mighty man as <clears throat> the Apostle Paul was, he didn't get to do everything he wanted to do. And so uh, we don't get to do everything we'd like to do. I know each and every one of us, we'd like to see every seat in here filled this morning. But we don't have that control. Other people have control over it, over that part of it, you know. So, verse 25 says, But now I go to, unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Now, now, notice what he said there. He goes to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. He didn't say to those in Jerusalem. He didn't say to the Jews, because he, he knew going to Jerusalem was almost a death sentence for him. Because they've been trying to kill him, you know. Every every city he went into, they'd be following him around, trying to kill him, trying to do something to him. Twenty six. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. In other words, they were given an offering, as we would say it today. <coughs> Twenty-seven said, "It has pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made made partakers of the spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in carnal things." You see, the book that we're reading today is a Jewish book. It was written by Jews. 
that was given by the Holy Ghost to godly men of Jewish of the Jewish faith, of the Jewish belief. And so he is saying here, you know, that, that it's our duty to minister to them. You know, we are commanded to pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, it's it's always been a strange thing, and I know they, they, some of these uh, groups uh, that hate hate the Jew, but they say they're Christian. Well, Jesus Christ was a Jew. You know, he came here as a Jew. Yeah, you know, that, that that's. People get their, uh, their thinking all messed up. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, here, here's the thing about it. If you don't stay in the word, the devil will put things in your mind, you know, and you'll come up with some of the craziest things. It's like this doctrine of replacement theology. How in the world can you believe in replacement theology, you know, and, and be a Christian and, and hate the Jew? I mean, that's basically what it is because replacement theology says God threw the Jew and he's, and he's turned to the church. Listen, if it hadn't been for the Jews, we wouldn't be here, you know. 28 said, then, therefore, I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit. I will come to you, I will come by you into Spain. <clears throat> Notice there, he called the offering fruit. And I, I, I suppose that's where, you know, you hear a lot of people say, you know, sow your first fruits and all this. So I suppose that's where they get this. <clears throat> Twenty-nine said, and I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of, of Christ. See, when we are really doing the will and the work of God, we are in his blessing. We will, even though things may be, be hard for us, we will still have the blessings of God. Because if, if we don't have the blessings of God, we're not going to be able to do it whatever it happens to be. He said, uh, 30 said, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. You know, there is none of us that is above asking somebody to pray for us. Even Apostle Paul here is desiring that the people pray for him, you know. And, you know, you know there was a, a minister that fell one time. We all know who I'm talking about, I think. And he said he had never asked nobody to pray for him. He thought he was above everybody else. But that's what's going to happen to you. Well, when we don't pray for one another, we don't support one another, you know, we're going to fall. Because we have got to have fellowship one with another, you know. If we if we don't have the the unity that is it, the Bible t uh, tells us to have, we don't have anything. We just have another organization. But we each week, or, or even. Even often, it's depending on whatever, wherever you attend church, you need to be at the services as much as possible to, to fellowship with like-minded people. Because if you don't, you know, all this worldly stuff out here out of what, it'll overtake us. You know, and the, de 
And the devil don't care what he does to you as long as he gets you, gets you to quit. That's his main pop, uh, goal. 31 says, that I, may, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. Now Paul knows that when he goes to Jerusalem, as we would say, he's going to stir up a hornet's nest. He knows that the Jews are going to be after him. But he, he, is, he is asking them to pray that the message that he is going to, to bring for, to the saints or the believers in Jerusalem will be accepted. You know, I, th I think it's, it, it is pitiful for a church or any type of ministry that does not accept the fullness of the word of God. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's like the, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, they're missing out on so much. And, and, but that, and that's what we talked about so much. These religious spirits, they're hindering spirits. They don't. They don't want. See, that, that's what Paul was dealing with. The, the hindering spirit. That same spirit that put Jesus Christ on the cross was still in Jerusalem. Yeah. And the sad thing, it's, it's went worldwide now. Yeah. They're doing, the world is doing everything it can to get rid of this man Jesus. You can talk about Muhammad or any of the other old prophets that, that some people pray to. It doesn't make no difference. But you mention Jesus Christ and everybody gets, the, gets upset. Yeah, but here, even though they may not want to talk about it, that's something that they need to talk about more than anything because they don't understand this life is just a vapor. It don't be a few years, they're gone. And he, is, he is the only hope that we have. America trusts in material things, the money and, and, the, and the things that, you know. But all that is going to be gone one of these days, you know. You know, as I've said so many times, it's coming a day somebody else is going to be driving my truck. You know, why, why do I need to worry about it? I've got to do what I've got to do today. What, I, what I'm doing right now is determining how I'm going to spend eternity. And, it, and, and people don't realize that. And, and, you know, we've got these people who don't even believe in hell. Oh, you know, oh, that's just a myth. We, we made it, uh, it, it. We'll just endure it for a day or two, and then we'll come out of it. No, no. once you get to hell, you're not coming back. No. Uh, you know, you see these signs, uh, dead end, no turn around. That's what you'll find. They, it's going to be a dead end. You won't be able to turn around in it. No. There's no, no way on this earth that we can imagine the torment that awaits the people that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. Yeah, it is bad, you know. <clears throat> 32 says, That I may come unto you with the joy by the will of God and may be with you and may, and may with you be refreshed. Mm. Don't you find it when you come to church and you're with like-minded be people, that you'll leave here refreshed. Yeah. yeah. How many times have you come to church and you just feel awful and you leave, you leave here feeling good? Yeah. 
See, this, this is what a lot of people say, well, I just felt so bad I couldn't go to church. That's when you need to go to church. You know, I understand these times you can't. I mean, you are, maybe down in the bed you just can't. But just because you don't feel like it, that's no excuse not to go to church. Because that's where you'll be refreshed. Yeah, I, I've, I've experienced some of that feeling worse when I come out than I did when I went in. Now, well, here, you know, you've heard me teach this. Every church is controlled by, by a spirit of some kind. It's either the Holy Spirit or a religious spirit. And when, you, when you're into those religious controlling spirits, you will feel bad. You know, and the thing about it, it once you get in it, it don't take you long to discern where you're at. You know, thirty-three said, "Now the God of peace be with you all." Amen. <laughs> Notice there, Paul is praying for peace all through the Bible. It, it, it speaks of us. Uh, Looking for peace, we 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 are we are to pursue peace, you know. You know, Jesus even said, "Blessed are the peace peacemakers." You know, so yeah. Anybody got any questions or comments on on uh, chapter sixteen? Now on <clears throat> fifteen. Now we start sixteen, verse one, and I'm sure right. For the next two verses, a bunch of religious people, if they, if they listen to it, are going to get very ex upset with me. He said, Paul says here in verse 16, Now I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is a creature, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succour of many of myself also. Paul says here that she, she has been a, a servant. The word servant in the Greek means a teacher, a pastor, a deacon, a deaconess. She could... She was in the ministry. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to deal with that. Verse, uh, and also he said, a succour. That means to stand before, to preside, to be over, or to rule. That's what those words mean. Now, now what am I trying to say? It is very possible that Phoebe was Paul's pastor. You know. And for religious people, that just upsets them no end. Oh, don't you ever give me no woman preacher. I've heard that a lot. I'd, I'd like to scream. Yeah. But, but, well, It first, right, right here is one one place for sure that 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 they come up with, with this. Uh, a woman can't do it, and and First Timothy, chapter two, verse twelve, Paul says here, but I suffer not a woman to teach or to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. They use that scripture there to say that a woman. Is not to, to to preach. Well, what what uh, what they do? They they tell this in in uh, ignorance, because what Paul is talking about here is the home. What he says, he's, he, let's read it this way in the Greek. I suffer not the wife 
to teach nor to dominate over the husband, but to be in silence. That's what he's saying there. That's in the home. It wasn't in the church. Why did Paul go on and say in other places that in the kingdom there's neither male nor female? You know. See, either Paul's contradicting himself or they just plain don't understand what he's saying. You know. Because if you'll ever notice, most of the time, women are far more sensitive to the spirits than a man is. They, they will discern things before a man will. And so, I've always said, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there will be a great move of uh, work of God through women in this area. Because have you ever noticed, when, when man says... Good, God can't do something, he'll usually wind up and do it and do it in a big fashion. So, mm -hmm. that's right. You know, see, mm -hmm. well. Mary brought forth the Son of God, so that, sh that shows me that God trusts a woman. You know? Sure, he, he didn't, the Son of God didn't come through a man. You know? And also, you know, a woman was the first one to, to bring the gospel. You know, they came and told the disciples, He's risen. Yeah. Yeah. It amazes me at some of the some of these local churches and some things that they do and say about women. You know, you know, uh, I've even heard I've even heard of them. They want if a woman wants to sing a song, she can't sing it up in the pulpit. She got to stand down here because up there she's ministering. Down here she's singing. Duh. No, he's not pleased with that. That's why. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, let no man deceive you. And these people are deceived. But did you know the worst deception you'll ever have is self-deception? When you think you're totally right and when you're totally wrong, nobody can tell you any different. And that's, and that's where we have a lot of people today. And we've got a lot of people going to, going to a place that they, don't, that they never think they'd go, and that's hell. Because they're so stubborn and set in their ways that they will not listen to the word of God. They won't listen to somebody else. You know, I listen to the I listen to some of these people, but then I evaluate what they say by the word of God. If it's wrong, forget it. You just forget it and go on. Yeah. You got, you know, you got, you got to do the word, uh, uh, the word of God like you do some flour, as you say. You got to get the impurities out of it. You know, see that that's what the devil wants. He want he wants to put impurities in the word of God, to so where people will, will will trust in that. Well, then if you're trusting in in the doctrines of man, God's got no obligation to you. The only, the only obligation God has got to me is what he said right here in his word. Now, in the 16th chapter here, Paul, for the first portion of it, he, he is giving a lot of greetings, and these, uh, and these names I, I just can't pronounce. I just <laughs> so, well, I believe our time's up anyway. So we'll pick, we'll pick up with verse 3, God willing, next week.